guys, welcome to the, the first ever Me Time Gamer podcast. First episode ever. Wow, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Been wanting to do this for a while, so you guys are going to be able to listen to me talk for a while. I'm alone, unfortunately, but I don't know how long that's going to last, but hopefully we'll uh, like what you get for the first episode and keeps you coming back for more. Thank you for listening, if you're actually listening in. Uh, my name is Jonathan Fournier. I'm uh, the creator and the editor-in-chief of Me Time Gamer. And uh, yeah, so welcome to the ride, and let's hope that we, we can enjoy this podcast. I really want to try it out, so let's see what we get. Start this off right, we'll start with the new releases for the week of January 12th, 2015. So the first thing we get is uh, a DLC, actually, for Assassin's Creed Unity, by the name of Death Kings, coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, if you got the Unity game, which uh, seems pretty good f- for what I heard so far, I haven't had a chance to play it, but hey, if you guys uh, have the game, it's available on everything, well, on every new console and PC, so try to DLC out. Uh, next game on the list is Funk of Titan for Xbox One, which se- just seems to be a little title, want to check it out, hey, why not? Uh, Trivial Pursuit Live coming to Xbox 360. Uh, next one is Monopoly Deal, coming to Xbox 360, PS4, and Xbox One. Next one is a little PS Vita title. It's uh, Atelier Aisha Plus, the Al- Alchemist of Dust. Uh, small little list for uh, for the beginning of the year, but at least you got a couple games to keep you going until uh, next week or the sorry the week after, where all the big games are start slowly starting to creep up on us. So that's going to be a fun thing to look at look for when it gets here. Uh, Alright, let's get to the This Week in News. Alright, so the first item on the list is uh, the PS Now subscription plans that were announced earlier this week. Be able to buy a subscription for one month for at $20. Uh, or you can buy a, another one for $45 for three months which comes back to about $15 a month. Uh, You'll have access to 100 PS3 titles with the subscription to play at any time. Not too sure about the survey set? Well, PlayStation covered you on that. They're going to give you a 7-day free trial to see if you like what you see. Um, Now, do keep in mind there's two separate lists and not all the games on the service are eligible for the subscription plan, some game you will still need to buy anyway, so keep that in mind before you buy the subscription plan. Th- this plan is probably made for people that are for new to PS4 and w- want to know what games were on PS3 before. For people that already had a PS3, probably not the best amount of money to spend. Uh, for $10 a month, eh, maybe it's a little bit better, but $20 is a bit steep for games that... Uh, most most of uh, older PS PlayStation owners already played, so uh, yeah, if you want to try it out, you're new to PlayStation, go f- go for it, try it. You got the seven day trial to see if you you like it, and yeah, that's about it for that one. The next item on the list uh, at CES this week, taking place from January 6th to January 9th, uh, CES. Uh, Tony Hawk announced at the Sony keynote that they later this year he's coming out with a new Tony Hawk game that's going to be pretty fun there's not there's no details right now or anything about the game so the only thing it's just officially announced that there is a Tony Hawk game coming out later later this year which I'm pretty stoked for because I loved that series when I was younger and even today I would still enjoy it if I still had my PS2 and if I had them on my PS3 still but hey uh if you so hopefully hopefully it's more in the line of underground and old Dells and uh, maybe uh, maybe able to switch back and forth between a pro skater style and underground style game that would be pretty pretty cool to play all right up next this week you got the PS plus games for January that came out uh, you're gonna be able to play on PS4 infamous first light which I highly recommend you can read our review on on our site about that I really enjoyed it. It's, it's, I find it even the story it's even more compelling than the actual main mission actually because there's just a, I feel there's a bit more emotion in the first light you, you play as fetch which is introduced in the main uh, campaign but this it's this uh, this one takes place before it even starts so if you want to um, 
the, before the main second sun even starts, infamous first light takes place before. Uh, you might want to play second sun before if you haven't played, uh, because you probably get a it. I think it it uh, changes the impact of what first light story is. So yeah, give it a try. If you feel like it. Um, the next on PS4 is the Swapper. I don't know much about the this game or any other of the games that are coming up because I haven't had a chance to touch them yet. But uh, probably yeah, sure. Keep give go give those ones a try. Uh, PS3. Well, you got Ducktail Remastered, which I don't, I'm even that one. I'm not sure what it's People say it's good. It's a uh, remastered of the original one, of course. So, Prototype 2. I've this one. I heard a good thing about. If you want to grab it, grab it because it seems like it's a good game. Uh, one one in game. The next game I want to try. It's coming out on the Vita. It's Duke Nukem 3D Mega Megaton Edition, which again, not a lot of people were stoked about Duke Nukem. Uh, for the th that edition, well, who knows? This one might be might be a good game to try out. I'm definitely gonna try it on my PS on, on the Vita. Uh, next little last little game on the list is Whoa Dave. Um, this one seems more like a sort of uh, s static uh, 3D uh, sta sorry a s static platformer, uh, sort of a, like a first gen Mario with Donkey Kong kind of thing going on, but there's a lot more detail. You can uh, you can see the the video on the on a, on the news article about that on the, on the website. Next story is we get we got some new details about Uncharted 4, a, th uh, a Thief's End, a uh, Game Informer for the month of February. Their cover issue is uh, Uncharted. So if you want to get uh, if you if you receive the issue this month, you're going to get plenty of info on Uncharted 4 uh, this time. Uh, Nathan, Nathan is called back to action by his, well, he th his thought to be dead brother Sam to find a lost and forgotten pirate Utopia in Madagascar named Libertalia. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but um, there will be other locations than Madagascar, which, which will feature probably more like a snow environment and urban and more of that kind of stuff, which should be nice because uh, we don't just want Drake to be uh, in the forest all the time. Uh, the article that they featured to, to tell about the, their cover story also introduced that there were going to be two rivals competing with Drake and his brother Sam by the name of Rafe and Nadine. They also made a quick mention that there would probably be a, a multiplayer coming back in the final version of the game. So I really enjoy if you really enjoyed Uncharted and you uh, you really enjoyed if. Just go look at the gameplay footage on the Uncharted 4 that came out from uh, PlayStation Experience last month and decide for yourself that I mean, it got me hooked. I've already pre ordered, so we'll give a look how that scene's coming up. So, the next, the last, one of my last items on the list that I got for this week in news is Sony gives compensation for outage. So, as stated on the US PlayStation blog, users will be getting an extra five days on their P PS Plus subscription. For the, what happened during the Christmas vacation for the DDoS attack and all those stuff, which I will explain a bit later. Uh, this little offering will be valid for full-on members and even people that only had a free trial -like subscription. So if you only had a 15 days or 30 days subscription, it would still it's still going to knock up, add on to your subscription plan, which is nice, which was only really out th three or four days, but hey, five days is good too. Uh, also, you also announced on the blog, users will get a one-time 10% discount voucher good for one cart purchase, meaning you can buy anything you want on PSN and s stick on this voucher to get a reduction. This will be for limited times, so when you hear the announcement, make sure you claim this stuff before it's too late. So yeah, that, that's... Personally, I didn't, th I didn't think it was really necessary for PlayStation to do that because it really, it really wasn't their fault. Little last tidbit of news bit of news uh, would be PlayStation surpasses 18.5 million PS4 sales since its launch date, which is pretty amazing. It's even better than all uh, that the PS PS3 did at the same amount of time. Uh, the general guess for Xbox, the number that were circulating was about 10, 10 million in December around. So still a decent amount of way off from one one each other so we might see the gap close during the year which is which I would I would see going 
happening a bit, but will they catch up this year? Maybe not. Well, it might happen eventually. And that completes uh, this week in news. All right, so so why not discuss what I'm playing right now? If you want, it, if you guys feel like knowing, uh, I recently for Christmas I actually just bought an Xbox One. Yeah, really. I just I decided to make the jump and try it out. Um, I really enjoy it so far. There's a couple of things different from the PS4, of course, uh, that uh, that itches me a bit, but uh, I still enjoy it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I got Rise, which is a, uh, a deal a deal that we got uh, in Canada for Boxing Day, which you could buy a refurbished Xbox One for 315 You got Rise and Dance Central Spotlight, which I played with my daughter a bit, which wasn't too bad. I'm just not quite of a dancer guy, so dancing game kind of guy, so yeah, at least I tried it, and it was a bit fun. Rise, actually, so going back to Rise... Um, being the first time playing that game, I enjoyed it. I liked the mechanism. I was playing uh, Mordor at the same time, so it kind of had the same feel of mechanics a bit. But, uh, yeah, Rise, if, if you haven't played it on the Xbox, I would, I'd definitely give it a try. It's, uh, that, the, that game got a little bit of flack at the beginning when it came out, being being called very repetitive. And, yeah, it's a, it's a bit repetitive, but the, the story and... The graphics are fun to look at, and it's just a fun time all around. Uh, what else? Well, if you guys are on the website, you saw that I put a, my Shadow uh, Miller Shadow of Mortar review, which the, if if you read the review, you saw that it's it's it was my game of the year for 2014. I really enjoyed the mechanic, just the nemesis system alone really really grabbed grabbed me by surprise, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, the story, I really enjoyed the story itself. The ending, uh, the ending could have been more than what it was. I th it's uh, not the story per se, just the way the fighting mechanism is at the end. I won't go into details because I don't want to ruin it for everybody. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Go, go read the review if you haven't. Um, other games I've been playing. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. A little bit of Far Cry, which also it was my game of the year until I started playing uh, Mordor. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, been just flopping around, played Doki Doki a bit. Free game that we got with PlayStation Plus a while back, and yeah, I really enjoyed it for now. And that's about it for what I'm playing right now. All right, so this is my little segment that I'm gonna call Ping of the Week. Alright, so basically what I want to do with this feature is I want to I select a title once a week or I'm going to try at least once a week to select a, select a, a, a subject and discuss, just give my opinion about it as best as I can. And then, I'll, of course, I would like you guys to leave a comment on the email I'll give at the end of the podcast and we'll see how that goes. Uh, Alright, so the, f the, the for the first ever ping of the week, it's going to be... The, Concerning the Christmas DDoS attack on the PSN and Xbox Live. So, if you own a console or got a brand new console during the holidays, you probably had a hard time getting into the networks. Uh, if you didn't know yet, these networks got a DDoS attack from a certain group that will, that will remain unnamed because, let's be honest, they don't need more credit than they already have. In layman's term, a DDoS attack is a distributed denial of service, which means that it renders the service unavailable. DDoS goes down as this. When multiple system floods the bandwidth or resources of a targeted system, usually one or more web servers are attacked. Uh, this is done w when multiple bots or zombie computers send out an overload of demand on a service and then creates a problem with a network because it, it can't give out as much as the demand. Now please do keep in mind that this is not hacking. These attacks do not give out any personal information or anything in that space. Now that we got the dirty stuff out of the way, let's get one thing straight. These attacks cannot totally be stopped by big companies. Example, Sony and Microsoft, two of the biggest companies in the electronic domain, and they, st they couldn't totally stop it. Yes, I know, Xbox was up faster than Sony. The reason for this is that Microsoft is a bigger software company than Sony. Can PlayStation do better? Yes, of course, and they will. The word around the net is that Sony was and is working on getting these attacks to a minimum. Here's the kicker about this little outage we had during the holidays. It was all for the lulls, as the group puts it. They had no demands, no nothing, just being kids with, a, with time on their hands. 
you know what's what's the problem that this might cause in the future? An increase in internet monitoring and other such impact that might change the face of the internet. I know some people would hate to lose their incognito status on the internet, but stuff like this just makes the government spying worse because it's illegal to perform DDoS's. On the other hand, mega file hosting service and now defunct mega upload founder Kim.com bribed the group to stop the attacks on their network, giving them $3,099 lifetime accounts for his mega server worth $300,000 if resold. This is this is just plain full unlawful and gives the, it gives in to terrorist demands, plain and simple. I don't know why his, what what his intention is behind this. Either it's to advertise a surface or just he just wanted to play video games. In any case, this should not have been the outcome of this situation. The, the good news in all of this, there was one wrongdoer arrested in England not too long ago. I won't name his name, but apparently he's 22 years old and was arrested on online fraud committed in the middle of the year. So it might not he might not get charges for what happened to Chris, the Christmas outage, but you know. He might just give up the rest of his ragtag group of misfits and it would solve this, this Scooby-Doo crime for now. At the end of the day, gamers had somewhat of a bad holiday because they couldn't connect to the service. Did it help the group's cause? No. They just turned the gaming community against them, really just punishing the gamers, not the man. At least, we got a little pick-me-up so from Sony in form of a 5-day add-on to our PS Plus description and a 10% discount voucher for good for one card purchase. Was this necessary? No, but we can still appreciate what PlayStation is trying to do. And that is to help us get rid of our Christmas blues. Alright, so that was the ping of the week. So, this, I guess we'll start rounding off the podcast now since I'm alone and I don't really have anybody else to talk with. So, uh, so if you, if you like the podcast and you like, you like the website, you can help us, you can check out, you can check out our affiliates, which really helps improve the website and, May, just makes it easier to get stuff around on the website done faster. Uh, you can check out our support us page, which uh, I'll when I publish the podcast, I'll also publish a uh, uh, document, uh, a post about this podcast that you'll see all the links on it to our articles and affiliate links and our special thanks page and uh, yeah. So uh, our affiliates, you can check out Amazon, which is I only have a Canada affiliate link right now and America affiliate. Uh, affiliate link right now so when you click that link choose your fl uh, choose your cr your country's flag on it there uh, check the link make with, with the Amazon link you can you uh, click on our link uh, make your purchase through our link anything you buy and it's sh shipped to you we get a little we get um, we get some a little percentage out of it that's gonna help the website become even better as the time goes on uh, it doesn't cost you anything more it doesn't do anything like that it just goes on to your normal purchase uh, our next affiliate uh, I'm gonna mention is www.g2a.com this is mainly a steam uh, code site where you can buy really cheap steam codes uh, usually you get up to 90% discounts on it so you can click our link in this page or usually uh, I got a couple of ads floating around the site with the g2a.com on it uh, usually on the sidebar you can find that um, special thanks I'm gonna give out uh, Techno Axe for uh, my intro and outro song for the, the podcast uh, also for uh, the This Week in News intro and the Ping of the Week intro uh, sorry uh, This Week in News intro was by Mansard in the freesound.org and for the Ping of the Week intro was Unfa at freesound.org also. One last thing is uh, if you want some, if you have any comment about the podcast, uh, anything you want to put a, your $2, uh, even, I really suggest if you got anything to say about the ping of the week, the Christmas DOS attack, uh, or you just want to comment on how I can do this better or be more comfortable, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to talk about on the podcast, even if you got questions or comments. Uh, if they're good con c constructive comments, I might read them on the podcast next week. Or uh, yeah, so uh, give that a shout if you want to try. Um, other other places you can check us out. Actually, if you want to follow me, Time Gamer, you can uh, check us out on uh, Facebook. Uh, you just go www.facebook.com forward slash me time gamer all one word. Uh, you can check us at me time gamer on Twitter, and you can find our YouTube page where you can probably find this podcast too at the same time. Uh, and I, I, uh, I also write on uh, gambitcom.com, which you can check those out. 
uh, they talk we over there we do gaming tv movies anime we got a lot of other stuff cool stuff so go check that out gambitcon.com all right guys have a good one see you next week